We're gonna go back 20 years in Titleist driver technology to see how some previous models stack up with the 2020 Titleist TSI 2. Hmm. <laughs> there we go. Hmm, interesting. That did not feel like that. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. Um, we've got some Titleist drivers to test out today. We're gonna go back a couple decades in, in Titleist technology with their drivers. We're gonna test out five models from the past 20 years and stack them up against the Titleist TSI2 uh, and really see how Titleist has progressed in their drivers over the years. So this will be a fun one because a lot of talk about how technology has really brought the distance in the past few years uh, off the tee. And so, uh, we're going to see how some of these classic Titleist models stack up. So Thomas, you've got maybe one of them in your hand here. Actually, you've got both ends of the spectrum in your hand. So um, this will be a fun one. I'm excited to watch you hit these shots. Yeah, we're going to be going back as far as the 975J 2001 when was, the, was when this driver was came out. And looking down at it, it's not very forgiving. Yeah. It definitely is a smaller profile compared to the TSI2 that I'm holding in my mm -hmm. hand here too. So. 20 years of technology is going to be a really interesting test. Mm -hmm. And I've got the 905R, and then we'll also include the 910D2 and the 915D2. So kind of roughly every four to five years, give or take, um, of a driver in this test. So this will be a fun one. So Thomas, we have you know these five models, but based on the hosels, we can't use the same shaft for everyone. So how are we going to make this test work? Yeah, the first two models, the hosels are bonded. So the last four, we can definitely play with the same golf shaft. But the first two are going to be still their stock stiff golf shaft. Uh, also keep in mind the loft. So there is a slight range in loft from 8.5 to 9.5. So it's going to be pretty close, but we'll definitely touch on the loft a little bit there. I'm holding the 975J 8.5, so not as forgiving, but I'm guess the ball speed still might be fairly high because the loft is still mm -hmm. really low. Yep, and then I've got the 9.5 905R. So it's not going to be a perfect uh, apples to apples test, but um, we'll do our best to make it as unbiased as possible. And Thomas, of course, will do the thing he does with his swing speed. So, uh, Thomas, ready to hit some bombs? Let's do it. All right, Thomas, you've got the 975J. Uh, you mentioned how that looks a little bit at address. Uh, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? What are you seeing uh, right now? Uh, definitely much smaller profile than I'm used to seeing. I know a lot of the other drivers are going to be 460cc, so this is definitely mm -hmm. not 460cc. So with it being a smaller profile, I'll be surprised. I feel like the spin rate is going to stay down. It's an eight and a half degree head, so it may go a little bit further mm -hmm. on the good shots. But the miss hits yeah. might be trouble. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, well, let's see it. Mm. <laughs> there we go. Mm, interesting. That did not feel like that. So, Thomas, we noticed some very uh, inconsistent performance here from this driver. There was a couple that you just smoked yeah. dead down the middle, but then I think the tendency was, you know, if you maybe missed it a little bit or didn't quite swing it perfectly, it really went out to the right. Yeah, we had a range and spin rate from like 1800 on that one that I smoked mm -hmm. that went really far and carried a long way to the other ones were just fairly high on the spin. And they curved a lot more to the right there too. I was having a hard time turning mm -hmm. the club face over as well. So, really interesting. It was hot on the good shots, but the miss hits were not quite as good. And they didn't feel like the miss hits. They just didn't perform as well. Interesting. Yeah, and you definitely had that like thud sound too. But I'm curious about how that compares to, for example, our next thing, the 905R, because that's when you get you know the larger 460cc club head and see if that really changes how the miss hits perform here. <laughs> Wasn't bad. Hey, that's I mean that's a, that's that a good. Actually, wasn't that bad. That's a decent result for the way you thought that might. Yeah, go it stayed in there. Helped me out a little bit. So that last shot was really interested. I was pointing to the right. I was expecting to go further, mm -hmm. maybe out by the 975J position, but it just stayed in there. So mm -hmm. forgiveness. 460cc head versus the smaller head with the 975J kept me in the fairway every single time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we noticed that. It, the spin also maybe was higher on average, uh, was more consistent. So I think we're seeing, I, I mentioned to you that, you know, there's a reason back then people weren't hitting up on drivers seven degrees because you get the ball high enough in the air, it's just going to spin more. And so I think yep. that's where you're seeing a big difference. And we should, as we kind of go through this progression here, see that spin drop and then those distance numbers will get a little bit higher. Yeah, back in the day when these drivers were 
out, people didn't have access to all the TrackMan data, mm -hmm. the GC Quad, Foresight, all, all the different data that you could access, swing data and see your attack angle to help them improve that way. There's been a huge increase in performance, not only in golf equipment, but also in swing technology as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, identifying swing tendencies, what's the best way to swing, most efficient way to swing. So, uh, but, and that's influenced how manufacturers have built the drivers uh, to combat that and ultimately you know, combine both of them together to generate better drives. So yep. um, with that said, 910D2 is the next one here. All right. Okay, Thomas, again, we saw that spin fluctuate quite a bit with the 910D2. Um, all but really one of those shots was over 3,000. Um, I mean, what did you think about those five shots? Looking down at the club, I had a hard time. For some reason, I was just like, this doesn't look suit my eye very well. Mm -hmm. And the first three shots I hit straight, I feel like I hit it well, but the spin rate was very high. Mm -hmm. The next shot I caught a little bit off the middle of the face. Spin rate was low and went dull to the left, and the last one left the face a little bit open to the right. It just didn't suit, suit my eye very well. But yes, it definitely did spin a lot. Mm -hmm. That was very surprising to see. I mean, more spin. Uh, my understanding is, I mean, you were I mean, hitting the center of the face darn near every time, or very close. It's nothing like you were drastically mishitting the 910D2 every time. That's not something you do to generate these spin numbers. So clearly there's a spin increase here from kind of the trend right now is uh, the newer the driver, the more spin. So we'll see if that continues here. I would doubt it, but hey, I've been proven wrong before. So. You can move on to 915D2 here. Yeah, I hope this flip flops at some point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Thomas, uh, that dispersion circle is certainly much better than the previous three. Uh, so while there might be a little bit of a drop in the club speed, we saw ultimately a terrific dispersion pattern and we did see spin drop a little bit compared to well, at least the 910d2 and the 905r yeah i feel like this is where the transition and forgiveness really kind of took a big step for for tightless because i feel like i wasn't swinging any different but mm -hmm. you can take a look at that dispersion pattern it was nice and straight the spin consistency was important to note there as well i think it was between 25 and 2900 mm -hmm. every single time as well so that stood out to me a lot there as well so Still spinning a little bit on the higher side. I know Titleist 915, 917 was a little higher. Then with the TS drivers, spin rate started to drop a little bit. So I'm excited to now test the TSI2 to really see if that spin rate has dropped compared to mm -hmm. the other models. All right, well, let's get after here. Let's see it. That was a good one. All right, Thomas, you've got all five drivers up there. Really a strong performance from TSI2 to wrap things up there. So um, in terms of dispersion, in terms of the spin dropping as well, great stuff there. So I did want to ask you kind of overall. So you had five drivers to hit, talking about the look and the feel of them. Going to get your opinion on that. Uh, clearly there were some differences in the way they look, for sure. But did the feel and maybe the sound progress as well? Yeah, it was very quiet, with more of a thud with the 975J. Then the next three were kind of loud and it just seemed kind of like there's a lot of an echo going on in this mm -hmm. room. And the last one didn't seem quite as loud. It's one thing I kind of noticed with mm -hmm. the middle, middle three, very, very loud drivers. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I noticed it too. Uh, there's that, that quick sort of uh, subtle thud almost with the 97J, 975J and then after that it was really louder, kind of brash. And then it kind of went back a little more muted with the TSI too. But um, so now getting into these numbers a little bit. Um, so clearly, it's, I think one of the trends, there's a, there's a few trends here, but one of them I think is as you get uh, more recent, the dispersion patterns get a little smaller uh, as a general trend, which is something we would expect, I think. You know, a little bit more forgiveness packed in, more consistency, and your shots are more, uh, more straight. Uh, throughout as we got to the newer drivers. Yeah, not only that, it was consistency. Like mm -hmm. with the TSI 2, when I was hitting those last five shots, the spin consistently, not only was yeah, it this spinning. this is actually a phenomenal number yeah. here. Yeah, not only was it spinning less, but it was actually spinning consistently less. Plus or minus 55, that's really, really impressive mm -hmm. because of consistency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, that's what you're looking for. If you're going to hit five drives, you want them to be 
you know, know what they're going to do. And so the difference that you can see in technology here is you hit the driver five times with TSI 2, you, you know what you're going to get spin wise. You come down to like the 975J, I remember right away, and we had anywhere from 1800 to 3200, and you didn't really know because I, I, when you felt it at impact, you didn't really feel the difference. Mm -hmm. And 1400 RPM spin difference can be a big deal. Yeah, and then the loft of the club. So we're testing from eight and a half to nine and a half. Yeah. With the 975J, that was an eight and a half degree head. It was the only one that was eight and a half. Mm -hmm. It, you know, back in the day, you know, as you mentioned, swing, chain, swing types changed a lot. It was a pretty good golf club back oh, in the yeah. day. It performed really well. And with that smaller compact profile, when you hit it in the middle of the club face, it's going to go. And I think there was a couple out there that mm -hmm. were really, really good. But then the consistency with that driver was kind of the, yeah. the, was the tough piece that I had with that. I personally like the look of that driver because I like the smaller profile on drivers. I don't like to see large drivers with a lot of weight being pushed back. Yeah. So it actually suited my eye pretty nicely. But when I miss hit it, it was trouble. Yeah. When you yeah. And, and I think it seemed as if when you didn't quite catch that one center, it didn't. There wasn't a huge difference in the feel either. It didn't seem like you really noticed anything. But yep. here's that one that you were talking about right here, where you kind of caught that one perfectly center with the 975J. Actually carried over 300 yards with low spin. So it's one of those where these older drivers, you catch them perfectly in the center, they're going to perform really well still for you. Mm -hmm. They have that low spin capability, but it's just the sweet spot, if you will, has grown over time so much that. You know, now you can see with the, you know, the TSI-2, you had actually four that are just right next to each other out here. And then, of course, one is, okay, I don't know, 15 yards right? I mean, whoop de do <laughs> Like, yeah. so, I mean, you can see for sure the performance progress over time. Yeah, it's showcasing forgiveness, which is kind of really important. I was surprised with the 975J. Yeah, one spinning at 1,800. I think it was only one of two shots that actually was under 2,000 to spin. Mm -hmm. But you got to come back to consistency. Consistency is kind of where it's at. And you're going to pay, you know, what, the reason why you pay a premium is you're getting the best technology that is available in 2021. Yeah. And that's just showcasing the consistency there. There's definitely great, great value drivers out there. We did not modify these drivers either, too. So if you're talking about custom fitting for a used club, you might be able to find something that's going to fit someone's player's tendency, mm -hmm. what they're kind of looking for, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I'm curious on ball speed just before we kind of wrap up. So I know ball speed claims, you know, we see over, over time here. Um, kind of interesting. So you will notice when I was hitting the 975J and the 905R, but about 167.8. So that's pretty high for, for drivers mm. back in the day. 169.3 with the TSI2, and then the Smash Factor. Smash Factor is also showcasing consistency there as well. So these are you know, five shots with each one. I don't know where I caught them on the face. Maybe we can bring that up really quickly mm -hmm. just to kind of showcase the hit location. So first starting off with the 975J. I was hitting it pretty good. I mm -hmm. felt pretty good, a small club head. But if I didn't catch it in the middle of the club face, it would have been trouble. So that, was, that definitely kind of stands mm -hmm. out to me there. We look at the other ones, we'll notice, pretty good again, pretty, pretty, pretty solid there as well. 910 D2, a little bit low on the face. We notice that the, the spin rate really kind of jumped up and that showcases, you know, making sure to get fit for the right loft for a player and, the, and their swing tendencies. I mentioned I didn't like the look of the club head when I set it down. I didn't hit it very well. So mm -hmm. looks is very, very important when it comes mm -hmm. to fitting as well. Back to the 915 D2, it's pretty good right there. So right kind of smack middle, slightly high. If you're gonna miss the middle of the club face, you wanna be slightly high on the, mm -hmm. on the face. And then if we look at TSI 2, it wasn't perfect. It was a little bit low on the face, but that spin consistency and also the lower spin definitely stood out to me there yeah. as well. So hit location is a huge influence as well. But you definitely can notice that, for the most part, they were all pretty close to the, to the middle of the face. I think 910D2 is the one I didn't quite hit very well. And then you'll notice that the, the ball speed was a little bit lower, and the spin rate, I believe, was quite a lot higher with that, if we take a look mm -hmm. at the spin. It was the only one that was over 3100. So that influences a lot, but keep in mind, it's important to get fit for the right loft, the right shaft as well. When we're testing these last four heads, we tested with the exact same golf shaft as well. So that was a variable that we took away as well. Yeah, so the, I think a lot of data here, Thomas, a lot of information, uh, but the nice thing is any one of these drivers, uh, you know, the selection at Second Swing will offer drivers from Titleist in the past 15, 20 years uh, in the selection. So stop into your local store or check with us online at secondswing.com. Any of these drivers can be yours if you're, hey, if you see the, the distance Thomas is able to get, max distance with the 975J, and you're able to find one at secondswing.com, that's, that's all power to you. You can grab that and swing it and 
knock the 300 like Thomas did. All these clubs are available, uh, and we welcome you to come in and get fit as well. Uh, if you're one of those looking for that extra push, extra distance to optimize your swing, one of these models, but specifically the TSI-2, is going to be great. So, Thomas, thank you for hitting all the shots today, breaking everything down for us. Uh, this is really, really interesting. Yep, not a problem.